In this video, we'll learn the basics of 3D modeling with BricsCAD. So let's get started. All right, so for 3D modeling, you need to start in the 3D modeling workspace and you can simply do that kind of like this. So let me start this software from scratch. And when you do that, this will show you the BricsCAD launcher from where you can select the environment in which you want to launch it. So I'll just go to modeling and here we are. Now we are in the start screen. So I'll just click on new drawing to start a completely blank drawing. And this is the 3D workspace. On this workspace, we have the ribbon area where we have tabs like home, solid, surface, mesh, civil, visualize and so on. On these tabs, we have the related set of tools. For example, for making 3D shapes, we have the modeling tab. If you want to modify it, we have direct modeling and solid editing and so on. For more modification tools, we have the solid tab. For surface related tool, we have the surface tab and so on. Now, right here, we have the navigation controls. So you can switch to different views simply by clicking on this view cube kind of navigation control option and here we have the UCS currently we have X and Y axis visible but we do have a Z axis which will be visible when you orbit your drawing so let's just begin by making the very first primitives and primitives are the 3d solid shapes which you can make without using any 2d sketch the primitive tools are here on the modeling panel so on the modeling panel we have under this drop down all of these primitives. Let's start with box. Now I'll click at a point and here we are. So this will prompt us to specify the length and width. So I'll just simply eyeball it and I'll click here to add the length and width. And now on the command line, we have an option called height of the box. You've got to specify that. So I'm going to type two and I'll press enter. All right. Now we should have three different things, length, width, and height. Though the length and width is visible, the height is not. Now, in order to see the height, you can switch to a different view using the view option. So in this case, I'll just click on this arrow, this arrow right here, which is top, front, left, or you can switch to any of these other views. So I'll just click here, and now you can see all the three sides, length, width, and height. Now, what if you want to move this freely? So if you want to move this object freely, all you need to do is just press and hold your shift key and then press your middle mouse wheel. And now when you move your mouse, you will be able to move freely in this 3D environment. And that's called orbiting your drawing. Now, what we see here is the wireframe visual style. So everything looks like kind of a wire framed object we have everything made with wires but if you want to change it to a different view then you need to go to this view option right click on it select visual style and change it to something else i'll change it to this modeling visual style and here we are now you can see it in a much better way all right, so that's the first primitive which we made. Now you can also see the X, Y and Z axis here and we'll make other primitives. So let me move it aside and I'll go to this option and select cylinder. Now you need to specify the base circle. So click and that will be the center of the circle, then the radius of the circle. So maybe let's add one as the radius and enter. Now you need to specify height. Now if you add a positive value, it will add a height along this direction upwards direction because well Z is pointing up so that should be positive if you add a negative value it will add the height in this direction so I'll simply type 3 here and enter and there we have it so we now have this cylinder with a base radius of 1 and height of 3 unit then we have the next primitive cone so with a similar workflow you've got the base radius and the height and then sphere here you only need one parameter and that's the radius so simply type a radius or click to make the sphere and then we have a pyramid so you've got to make the base polygon in this case I'll just make it well simply by eyeballing it or you can specify the radius of the inscribed circle here so if this polygon is 
inside a circle if you imagine it kind of like that then the radius of that circle should be what you need to specify here so you can just type that radius or simply click and that's the base and specify the height and we have the pyramid shape kind of like this and then we have the wedge so you can just make a wedge so you've got to just make the base rectangle and then the height along y-axis and finally the torus this donut kind of shape so again on this line I'll just click and I'll make the first base radius and then width of the torus so the width of torus well I'll type 0 point well 3 for this and enter there we have it so the base radius was from center to the center of this so center of these two circles that's the base radius of the torus and the second width which was 0.3 is the radius of this cylindrical shape this kind of the torus shape or the tire kind of shape that you see here and these are primitives you don't need any 2d sketch for making these but we have another kind of geometry which you can make using 2d sketches and usually we make sketches using geometries so let's explore it for that I'll create a new drawing and I'll start by making a circle and a rectangle so I'll just make a rectangle here and I'll connect a circle with it all right now if you want to convert these into 3d all you need to do is just go to this creation option and select extrude now select this object boundary and press enter and this will now convert it into 3d but before that you need to specify the height of this object so you can now specify height here or you can click on two points to specify it let me do that simply by clicking on two points so I'll click here as the first point and maybe here as the second point and there we have it so we have a height of three unit here approximately three unit for this again we can change the visual style so I'll right click visual style modeling there we have it now let's do the same for the circle so I'll go to this extrude tool again I'll select the circle enter the center here and now instead of specifying height in this way how about we do that using command line so I'll press escape and I'll do this again extrude circle enter and height of five units so five and enter again there we have it so this will specify height in this way so that's called extrude tool now let's see the next tool so the next tool here is revolve and for revolve tool I'll make a simple geometry first so I'll go to this option the view option and I'll select the top view I'll zoom out and I'll move it aside and using the polyline tool which is on the draw panel I'll make a simple shape which is kind of like this here so that's a completely closed curve made with polyline now I'll make a reference line as well kind of here and we are ready to revolve this geometry so I'll go to this revolve tool and now I'll select this closed curve first so I'll select this and enter now we need to specify the axis of revolution so you can click on these two points or you can select object from the command line and click on this object now this object will revolve about the selected axis or the selected line all you need to do is just specify an angle of revolution so by default 360 is selected but just to show you how revolve works I'll use an angle of 270 so I'll type 270 and press enter and this is what we get now if you cannot wrap your head around this kind of shape then let me show you what is happening in this case so we've created this shape this was the 2d shape which we created and then we created this axis which is barely visible here so we have that axis line that's hardly visible here but now with this view you can see that axis line so we created this then we created this axis line and then we used revolve tool to revolve this shape around that axis line and that's how we got this revolved shape you can obviously use a 360 degree angle in order to revolve it completely around that line so maybe let's do that so I'll press ctrl Z a couple of times I'll go to revolve I'll select this shape enter now I'll select these two points instead of selecting the object and I'll press enter and there we are now it will revolve 
by an angle of 360 degrees and that's what we have here that's the revolve tool now these are some of the basic tools that you can use but apart from that you also need to know about the way UCS works in this case I've only created things on XY plane because XY is the only plane on which you can make your drawing XY is also called the top plane so if you click on top and make anything here for example a circle you will be able to make it pretty easily if you however change your view maybe to front and then try making something well look at this you won't be able to make it so I'm making a circle but it looks like a line let me zoom in and change the view and you can clearly see what we are getting here so we are still getting our circle on the XY plane so that's a big thing here you cannot make your geometry on any other plane now that might be a concerning thing as well because what if we want to make things on some other plane in that case you need to change the UCS or the view so for that I'll use this view option and I'll change it to front now you know that we are in the front view where we cannot make things because we are on the ZX plane or XZ plane now in order to make things on this plane you need to first go to this UCS option on the coordinates panel click here and then select current view now it will change your current view to XY and if you make anything now well it will make it exactly on this one so that's how you need to make it so once you are done with this you can still convert this thing into a 3d and maybe if you want to add anything on this face well you can do that now but once you are done you want to return this UCS back to the default position all you need to do is just click on this world UCS option and your UCS will return back to the default position so that was the basics of how you can start modeling 3d drawings in BricsCAD in the next video we'll talk about some advanced 3d modeling tools